Okay, here's a repair video for all you Honda lovers out there. As some people call it chap scrap, but I like Hondas too. This is regular maintenance. There's nothing wrong with this car. It's just time to get the timing belt changed. And water pump as the dealer recommends. And it has 138,000 kilometers. My experience, the water pumps usually go bad between 160,000 kilometers and 200,000. So first step is to pull the wheel off to get at this little plastic cover that's hanging down there to get the crankshaft bolt off, which I've already done. Hey babe, you coming to get your car? Yeah. Well, you're going to be on YouTube now. No, I'm not. You better not. Uh-oh. The next thing I did after I jacked it up was uh, put a, another jack underneath the oil pan. So as you can see, we're at the bottom of the car. Oil pan's just got the weight taken off it and that's all. And now, next step, remove the top motor mount. Oh. I've already unbolted it, three 17 millimeter bolts. The oil pan being jacked is holding the motor from falling. Next step to do the timing belt, remove this gay plastic cover. This engine has uh, four ignition coils, one for each spark plug. You have to loosen all the bolts on the rocker cover and the bolts on the wiring harness to get at this bolt and lift the rocker cover up about that much in order to get the upper timing cover off, which I've already unbolted. Make sure the camera's always held parallel. I just noticed this car has some sort of sensor under here, so I'm unplugging it. And I've got the rocker cover pried up now. Where's the sensor? The sensor's in that You're hole. Hold the lamp in front of it. Now we see it. Oh, now to see if this cover comes off with all this air conditioning crap here. There. Now this is supposedly the original timing belt. So don't hold the lamp in front of the details. It's still tight. Oh, that's a cam position sensor. It probably has to do with firing all those coils. Yeah, it adjusts for the timing belt wear. So, now I have to take off all those other little plastic bolts. I mean, bolts on the plastic engine cover down at the bottom. And then pull the crank pulley off that I've already got unbolted again. Well, now the next step is to loosen the power steering and loosen the alternator so the belt becomes a little bit loose on both of them. The power steering has a little wing nut and a locking nut right here. The alternator is quite hard to see but there's a wing nut down there and the same kind of adjustment locking nut. And I only have to move them about a quarter inch. Well the one to loosen the alternator is way under here just above the compressor pulley. Now these engine crank pulleys are just put on hand tight so you don't need any tools to take them off when the belts are loose and I'm just going to pull them with my hands. Pull it with my hands. No effort at all. You just don't want to lose the little key that goes in there. That little key. Now I've got a few more 10 millimeter bolts to get out. Now that I've got the three little 10 mil bolts out that hold the plastic cover on, I can drop it out from the bottom. Simple as that. And the bolt didn't come out far enough, so I've got to take off the power steering reservoir bracket. Now that that's out of the way, the bolt came out just far enough to pry the alternator back. Oh, got it. To completely remove the alternator to get access to that bolt, that bolt, 
and one back there to get this big bracket off, motor mount bracket. And there's also two you can't see down there. Well, now that I've got five bolts out of this stupid motor mount bracket, I can get it out of the way so I can change the water pump and time bolt. That Hondas used to be easy to work on. Not now. Well, at least everything's in plain view now. Not very many bolts to get the little water pump out. And that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to use this green marker, put it up here, and put a mark on the top pulley and on the bottom one. Well, now I've got this green mark and it says up already written on it, pointing up. It's a little line cut in here and a little line cutting there and they're parallel now to the top of the head. And I'll put a little mark on here now. Orange tensioner nut is loosened. I have a big pry bar to push back the tensioner. As you can see it moves. So I push it back and I tighten it. Pushing it back and tightening it holds the tensioner out of the way so the belt is loose so I can peel off the belt. And put the new belt on. Just discovered I have to take off that one gold nut to get the crank position sensor out of the way to get the belt off the bottom cog. Now that the sensor is out of the way, I can pull the timing belt off. The way you test how crappy a timing belt is, is to squeeze it backwards and look for little cracks in between the teeth. Uh, so this one's in fair condition. I bet it would have lasted another 50,000 before he, it broke and he bent all his exhaust valves and dented the pistons. Piece of shit. Now to slip a new one the same way I took the old one off from underneath and pull it up. Crank sensor is back on. Belt is flipped on loosely. Now I'm finally draining the coolant just before I remove the pump. I have just pressed the o-ring style gasket into the groove with my fingers and that should stay in so I can now switch the water pump. It only had four bolt holes. Pretty simple to take off. Well I just discovered removing the rad plug doesn't drain all the coolant out to get this stupid thing off so now I've got a flood. Pump's still good but it's a lot of work to change one if it goes bad after you've done your timing belt. Oh well piece of shit. Now I've just got to clean the surface where the gasket seals with a razor blade and throw the new one on. All cleaned up, simple as that. Now when you're putting your timing belt on any vehicle, always put the side on first that goes in a straight line that doesn't have a tensioner on it so it lines up properly and check your upper and lower cog marks to make sure they haven't moved. The belt is on but not tight yet. My cog marks have not moved. So first thing I do is pre-tension the straight side just by moving this a little bit. That's it. Now it's tight enough. This, this type of car has a spring that puts the right amount of tensioner on the roller that keeps the belt tight and you don't have to set it afterwards. So, hey, it's going to jump. Didn't jump a whole lot. Now I just give it a little tug with my hand. Make sure it's all the way in place. Check tension. Tension's good. and then tighten up the lock nut and it's tensioned. I'm going to put this pin in the ass motor mount back in. Now that the uh, motor mount is on tight, I'm going to put the alternator back in place.